My name is Plot Marco. I'm a creative social entrepreneur working with Jibilika Dance Trust in Zimbabwe. Well, I started uh, my, my interest for towards arts started a couple of years back. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll put it at 1999 when I worked for the first Arara International Festival of the Arts as a volunteer. Uh, since then, you know, a lot of creative ideas started uh, playing around in my mind. And uh, a couple of years later, in 2007, I decided to come up with uh, the first ever eclectic, eclectic National Dance Festival, uh, which became Jibilika. And since then, it has given birth to the organization and a couple of initiatives that we have done. Uh, and we have uh, managed to do a lot more other projects uh, since that uh, beginning. Um, I'm jubilant about the project and the vision has outgrown me, so it's no longer just me alone. Uh, Jubilika is it's, it's an organization, it's an initiative that runs on youth energy, uh, an organization that promotes youth culture for youth engagement, empowerment and development. So basically our programming revolves around what interests young people. Uh, initially it was basically dance, but now we've grown to include other elements of I mean, popular youth culture such as uh, music, you know, hip hop, dancehall and beatboxing and other you know, interesting you know, elements that connect to young people. Uh, so we run multiple projects. Our first project is the Jibilika Dance Festival which runs annually and brings together dance groups from all the provinces of Zimbabwe. Uh, in addition to that we also do an HIV initiative program called Step Up to HIV which uh, goes into schools and communities and talks to young people about HIV through what they understand the most and what interests them. Uh, and uh, the third project, uh, it's a community arts center that we're running uh, in Highfield where we're giving uh, different creative skills to young people within schools and communities for free on a regular basis. And uh, yeah, we have other smaller projects that come on board from time to time. For example, Unshakeable, which is uh, a, a dance event that we do for solo dancers uh, in December. Uh, but apart from that, we're basically training, uh, doing a lot of uh, mentorship and development to young people that are interested in urban arts culture. My love in arts, uh, I would say it started as a little boy because I used to love music. I used to listen to a lot of reggae, a lot of dance, because the people that I grew up around, they just loved it and they used to play a lot of it. So I think from then it created, you know, it, 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 uh, it grew a seed in me that uh, sort of made me more inclined towards arts. And uh, for my college I did media studies and my interest was basically around arts. And I never performed myself, I'm not a performer, I'm not an artist. So it's, it's, it's basically from just seeing and getting inspired from what I'm seeing on TV. I remember for dance, it was stuff such as, you know, movies like You Got Saved, you know, that I watched around 2003, 2004, you know, that sort of created a bit of imagination in my mind to say, you know, why don't we do something like this in Zimbabwe? And I've managed to develop through the years from just exposure and experience, traveling and getting to see things happen and creating those ideas and making that happen. <laughs> when it comes to inspiration, uh, well, there are a couple of people that inspire me. Uh, my mother inspires me a lot. Uh, not because she's an artist, no, but she raised us, you know, 11 kids. And uh, as a peasant farmer, that inspires me a lot to say, you know what, there are a lot of possibilities. She never went to school that much. I think she only went up to primary school before she, she didn't even complete a grade 7. But she managed to send all her kids to school, to university, you know, to colleges. Uh, so just that belief, that conviction to say education can empower a child, I think inspired me to say, you know what, I can actually be an inspiration to another kid besides that I'm not an artist myself. I can actually uh, promote something that can invest, something that could see someone becoming empowered uh, and uh, in, you know, developing a society, developing a generation and a community. Yeah. I think the implication, the first implication of inspiring someone is uh, it, 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 it creates sort of some checks and balances on you. 
in the sense that uh, you have to uh, walk a very thin line where you're balancing your humanity, your personality with what the world, what people start expecting from you. Because, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, you realize we are humans. We also make mistakes. The things that we do wrong, we also have a social life to live. But when uh, you have a bigger society that is looking up to you, somehow uh, every decision that you make, every step that you make, has to be informed by what, n not necessarily what you, you, you desire, but also what people expect from you. Well, I, I grew up in Glenview. I grew up, you know, in the in the in the in the dust. I grew up like in the rough community, uh, where for, to get everything you had to hustle. You know, where things were not so easy. Where at times uh, you had to go to school without like really proper uniforms. You know, uh, where I mean, you you would see, you would hear, you know, a lot of things happening in the society, in the community. But I think it's that kind of upbringing that sort of strengthened me. That sort of hardened me because coming up with Jibilika, it came with also a lot of struggles. And I don't think I would have managed to make uh, it through some of those challenges if I had not gone through some of the hardships. So I would say uh, it was like the rough that sort of created, you know, that the sort of diamond that is beginning to shine within me, you know, in terms of uh, my career, in terms of also the inspiration that I'm beginning to impart to you know, my other peers and other young people that I see around Zimbabwe. Well, I mean, starting up Jibilika, I faced a lot of numerous challenges. And uh, I think one of the most notable challenges that I will never forget is in, was in 2011, uh, when we were doing Battle of the Year, the International Hip Hop Dance Championships. And we are doing the Zimbabwean qualifier. Uh, and that year, uh, I, think I would call it, it was the cursed year, because the challenges that I faced then almost broke my spirit. That is the only moment when I thought, okay, maybe I might consider quitting and stopping Jibilika. What happened is um, we had uh, dance groups coming for our festival for, for that battle of the year, deported uh, for different reasons. And uh, after that, we, we, we managed to do the event uh, still with less uh, participants and we missed our flight in South Africa to go to France and that was the first time that we were supposed to get into Europe. I had a dance group and missing that flight came up with a lot of backlash, it came up with a lot of challenges and a lot of dancers, a lot of people that were looking up to Jibilika, they lost faith in the organization. So there was uh, a, a turning point where to start picking up the pieces and looking back and saying where are we getting things wrong? Where do we go from here? Should we continue or not? So I think that year was really uh, the defining moment. Well, since 2011, I mean, uh, annually I've been traveling to different parts of the country. I've been to Europe, I've been to the States uh, several times, uh, and I've participated in a lot of global platforms. I've managed to participate in the Young Africa Leadership Initiative, YALI, uh, where I got a chance to meet President Barack Obama. Uh, I participated in the International Visitors Leadership Program in the States. I took part also in the International Society for Performing Arts uh, you know, uh, Congress in the States. I took part in uh, different initiatives in, in Europe, in Germany, in France, in Switzerland, in Spain, and that has managed to broaden my imagination, that has also managed to enhance my skills. Uh, it has sort of given me the, 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 the kind of knowledge that I'm using today in terms of my artistic development. Well, I mean, it was the coolest thing that has ever happened to me. Uh, you know, just seeing him, I, managed, I didn't manage to really, you know, greet him, but I saw him like two meters you know, in front of me, and it was quite uh, thrilling because is one of the most inspirational you know, African-Americans that we know. He has managed to change the history of the world uh, in an amazing way by becoming the first black president for the United States. Not only that, but just the inspiration that he gives uh, to a lot of young people and uh, other leaders you know, in the world. Somehow for me it was a dream come true. I came back running saying, you know what, if this can happen, you know, an African-American boy born of a Kenyan father can do this, 
why not me? So I think it was more of an inspirational moment. Okay, I met I met Barack Obama uh, at the completion of my uh, three months uh, Young Africa Leadership Initiative program, which is basically a program done by the U.S. government where they identify 500 young people from Africa to come to the states and be at different universities where they learn, you know, different things, be it civic leadership, be it, be it business, be it, uh, uh, you know, public administration. So that's when I met Obama. Uh, on the regional platform, Jibilika is doing quite well. We've begun to also attract interest from different countries. We have artists from Kenya, from Zambia, from uh, Mozambique and Botswana and even South Africa that are interested to participate in our festival. We've had some uh, exchanges with uh, artists from Tanzania, from South Africa and you know different parts of Africa. So I think regionally we're beginning to attract a lot of interest. There are other people that are beginning to ask for us to even set up a festival of the same magnitude in their country because they either don't have the same or they're just basically interested in such a festival. Well, I think the biggest achievement is maintaining a festival for nine years, given the economic, macroeconomic conditions prevailing in Zimbabwe. It's not been easy uh, because it's not entirely everything that we do that is funded. So we've had to come up with you know, different ideas to how, on how to sustain the initiative. So apart from that, uh, I think the other achievement has been to, uh, you know, be able to have young people buy into the vision, buy into the idea and run it because Jubilee is run by uh, young volunteers. So it's, it's, it's basically young people giving in what they have, what they want, their passion to run an initiative, which is a very interesting thing uh, for me because I'm like just to be able to get people to rally behind a vision and support it without really expecting much in terms of financial gains, it's it's, it's, it's quite inspiring for me. Well, my family has been very supportive of my dream uh, because I used to work before I left uh, my job. I actually literally resigned from my job. I was working for the central bank and most young people would definitely love to work for such an organization. So when I left, being a breadwinner and deciding that I'm leaving my job, I'm going to pursue Jibilika, uh, what kept me running was my mother who said, you know what, you can go ahead, do it if you love it. You know, considering that she is somebody who is not really much exposed and informed about what exactly I had to do, she just supported me. So I think my family has been very supportive, even financially through the years. There are times when we had, uh, you know, the bottom of things, and they always came to the rescue. So even morally and spiritually, you know, they have been always there. My siblings, my brothers, they attend a lot of the events. They're always there, you know, supporting, you know, in every way they can. Well, looking back, we've done so much things. What's next is we're looking at uh, creating a more sustainable model, a more viable, uh, developing Jibilika to become uh, uh, less of uh, just the social part, but more of an enterprise where we're able to uh, create jobs, we're able to create, you know, uh, initiatives, different projects. So we're looking at establishing, you know, a multimedia center at uh, within our community art space. We're looking at, uh, you know, just getting somebody else to run Jibilika. I don't want to run Jibilika forever, you know. So within the next few years, one, two, three years, I mean, I should not be at the helm of Jibilika. There should be another young person running the organization. So, yeah, that's the next picture for Jibilika. Well, what I would like to say to that young boy who is uh, Mbare, who is uh, in Dotito, uh, who is in Filabusi uh, today is that, I mean, whatever that you dream of, whatever passion that you have, you can become that. What's only needed is for you to just uh, research, you need to read more, you need to just get exposed more, you need to stay humble and to stay hungry because whenever that hunger dies, that's when you stop creating. So humility is one of the key driving points that could get you to your vision. Because you cannot learn if you have got pride, if you have got high egos. Uh, so I think basically the story text, they need to just be humble and, 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 and learn and be willing to, to start law. Well, Will Smith inspires me a lot. Uh, he's one person who came not from so rich a background, but 
what he has managed to do. He has managed to uh, really create, you know, uh, an amazing film career that spans years, you know, from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, you know, up to now, he has really managed to do so well. I, I really consider him as one of my inspirations. If you look at his film, The Pursuit of Happiness, it, it, it really touches not only uh, in the American context, but it also touches on us. And locally, you know, uh, there's a lot that we can relate on it.